Hello, and welcome to Digital Crafters. I am your host, Fernando Garcia, and this is going to be the first episode of this podcast where I'm going to be interviewing artists, designers, and developers who are making a living from what they make with their computers. That means that whether they're creating video games, software tools, or simply art, they are actually living from what they make from those things. So in this first episode, I'm going to be interviewing Rubna, who is a video game developer from the Netherlands. And we're going to be talking about his creative process, the challenges that he has faced, uh, the things that he has learned. So I hope you enjoy this first episode and enjoy. We should be live now, basically. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> oh, is it very cold? Uh, no, I'm I'm hot. I took off my sweater, my second sweater. Yeah. I live in the Netherlands, so it's cold here. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, well, first of all, I'm super super excited to have you here. Um, as I already said, like I I really admire your work and. Uh, like just the fact that you're like so young and at the same time like build so many games like that's just crazy to me so uh thank you for taking some time to you know have this interview and um yeah the, the main reason uh, that i wanted to interview you was to basically get into your head and see like what decisions you took uh you know like into becoming a game developer an independent game developer and like basically going through this career path of more like an artist you know because you have to like try things and you might not even find a way to get a living out of this but you actually mm -hmm. made it right so I, I definitely want to ask you about how you create like so many beautiful games in so in such a small amount of time like that's just crazy like <laughs> i saw that um tweet that you made about like how many hours you spent um but before yeah, before jumping into details, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, you know, like who you are, what you do, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm Ruben or Rupna on Twitter and I make uh, video games. <laughs> I'm 23 years old and uh, yeah, I work on work with Sockpop. We're like a game collective of four people. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. So could you uh, tell us more about Sockpop? Um, I mean, I'm assuming that everyone who's watching this knows what Sockpop is, right? But like, if there's for some reason someone who doesn't know that. Yeah, so, so Sockpop is a, a collective we started um, as like a, a games company, but it, within Sockpop, all the four of us work solo on the project mostly. And since 2018 we've been running this patreon where we make a new game every two weeks uh, and people can pay three dollars a month or more and they get the new games as they come out so yeah awesome yeah so uh one of some of your most recent titles are um you know hilly or not uh pocket watch uh, which is the most recent uh pyramida and uh, just to mention like a few of them right um because i actually went to count how many games you have developed and i counted like 20 games for software yeah. yeah yeah it's a lot that's sure. a lot yeah. of games yeah yeah <laughs> i think um we're at 77 now in total wow. and so five by four it's around about by 20 right a person so yeah it, it's, it's, it's really is a lot it really is a lot and I think every the crazy thing is that like every game that I start, I'm again like, how do I do this? Like, it's 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 it stays hard. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. So like, um, uh, I kind of wanted to head I get ahead of myself and ask you about that. Um, so like, when you start a game, like, how how do you actually do it? Like, do you start from an idea? Do you let it flow? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like what goes into your mind? Yeah, I think it's it's a bit different for every game, but mostly there's this there's this this main idea that I start out with, 
So for example, with Heliodot, it was this idea of, okay, can I make a character walk around a, a planet? So I kind of wanted to explore the technology how, of how to do that. Um, and then in the case of Heliodot, I, I made a, I think like a, like a tech demo, I, I guess. In, okay. Uh, like late in the year of 20, 2019. And then I kind of didn't know what to do with it. So I just went on to make something else. And then later I came back to it and started to think like, well, maybe, you know, if, if you have planets, then you probably want a spaceship. So I, I made spaceship and then I was like, well, okay, if you have a spaceship, you should have like a goal or something. Um, so, so that's kind of how it starts, I guess, with every game is there's, there's this main idea that I want to explore. And then I'm like, oh shit, now I, I have to make a game about this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I kind of try to figure out like, okay, what will be like the most interesting thing to do with, with this thing that I've made. Yeah. Okay, cool. And like, how, like, when do you usually start? Like, cause you have to, on Sockpop, you're four people and you have to create a game every two weeks. Um, so you're basically up like every month or yeah, so every two months I have to release a game. Okay. So every two months. Yeah. Um, so I usually start like, uh, like I think maybe four weeks in advance or six weeks. Okay. But uh, I, I usually need more time. My <laughs> 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 four last titles all ran late and pocket watch by a month. So I, I, I guess I start too, too late, <laughs> but mostly, okay. yeah, mostly a month or six weeks in, in advance. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And that's like, usually when you start doing uh, what you said, right? Like you create a, like you think of a, like some aspect of, of a technology, uh, like your own custom 3D rendering process, or like that idea of like having a character walk on a planet and mm -hmm. like you, you play with that uh, like in advance and you kind of leave it there. Maybe you start working on something else and then you go back to it. Like maybe you had some kind of breakthrough and uh, you start developing like, you know, like manually going through like ideas, right? Like constructing on top of this, um, like demo that you create. Yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of different for every game. Mm. Um, for for example, uh, for Fishy 3D, I kind of already had this idea that oh, you know, it was gonna be a puzzle game. Mm. And then, for example, for Clickbox, I already I already kind of made the game before, so yeah. I, I kind of knew like so. Um, for example, for Heliodot, there was this period in advance where I kind of already made a tech demo, but it's not the case for every game, for sure. Like, okay. Yeah, it tends to be better if I if I do have made something sometime, but most of the time it's just like, okay, I have to make something new. So, yeah. Got it. And there's uh, no like, clear cuts. Like this is how I start. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like just, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I can just, imagine. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, could you repeat that? I, I think I spoke over you. Yeah, so it's, there's no real clear cut uh, like a formula that I follow with creating games. Um, so it's kind of different for every project. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially because it's like art. I mean, it's not like something that you can like plan out detail by detail and like just have this a mental map of like oh yeah it's gonna be like this it's it, no it yeah depends. yeah yeah i used to think that like um i think one of the big things i learned with making so many games is that people or i tended to have this really like vision in my head and like of this is how the game is going to be and then if i uh like if, if the, the more I made the game and it would deviate kind of from the vision, the way I felt it, I would be like, no, I have to, I have to do this part again because it's not close to my vision. And what I realized is that this vision of this game that you have is very, it's going to be very vague always. So there's not really, like the moment you fill it in, it, it's kind of like a dream you have. And then the moment you start making it, it kind of turns into something else. And you're like, wait, but this is not what I envisioned. 
and what I learned is that you're never really going to to attain that that vision like one on one. You you can't really capture it. So you kind of have to start somewhere and have this idea, but you also have to kind of let go and just follow the process as it goes. Yeah, that's crazy. That's pure wisdom right there. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just um, I think like making games is a very creative process, and you learn a lot about just the process in itself is doing so yeah got it and i can imagine that like just working on so many games like always you know always um keeping this process active like that i guess that really has changed your perspective on your work and like has helped you like even master your own style um how would you how would you say that working on sock pop has changed you like before entering there and now like now that it's been like four years or five years like how much do you think your awareness of your own process has increased yeah i think i think the i think it's been really good because i was always before sock pop just starting projects and then kind of abandoning them because i wasn't interested anymore and then starting a new pro pro uh, project and then abandoning that and then with Sockpop, I kind of had this deadline and expectation, like, okay, people want, like, they, we promised the game to them, so I have to finish this. So the main thing that's changed, I think, is that I just have to, to finish stuff now. And that's kind of changed my whole pers perspective on it as well. Um, and it kind of made me realize that you kind of want this game to be, to be perfect, because it's like, you made it. So you, you kind of want to it to be perfect, because, but you can't because you have limited time. And that's yeah. going to be true for everyone because you, like, even if you spend 40 years on something, that's still a limited amount of time. So it's never going to be perfect. And the, the thing I learned is that um, you want to make some sacrifices sometimes and be like, well, this is not really how I do it now, but it's already there. I'm not going to do it again because it will take too much time. I'll just release it. And uh, what I also realized is that people don't really, really notice, or it might be something else completely, right? So if it's if it's not exactly what you intended, it will be something else, and then it could still be enjoyable. Um, so I think that the the way the process changed is that it's just like more letting go of that that um, that sort of perfectionism vision, maybe. That you have in the mm. beginning got just, it just be okay with stuff being a little broken or not perfect yeah. yeah that's that's super interesting yeah and uh i mean that i just have like so many questions about that <laughs> so you uh, when did you actually started making video games um yeah uh i think so i i kind of copied my brother because he always used to make uh, games in Game Maker, in Game Maker Seven, I think. Back okay. Then. And then um, I I would just be super excited, and I just watched him making games. And then, yeah. And so that's kind of how I started, and then, you know, I I got my own computer at some point, and then I installed Game Maker, and then uh, uh, a friend of my brother showed me how to do like gravity. So things would fall and like make yeah. it like a platformer. But I didn't know how to how to make the guy stick on the ground or he would stick okay. on the ground and move. So I just made it bounce. <laughs> okay. The game was called, I think, Dot or something. It was like a platformer. And that, that was, I think, my first game. Awesome. And, yeah. So I started so when I was like 10 or 12 or something, like really early. Oh, that's, that's really like a, a very young age yeah 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 that's amazing yeah i remember uh you know like the the little logo of the uh, game maker 7 like it was like this red ball and like a hammer i think yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's 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 really funny mm -hmm. and uh, were you participating like in the yo yo games community or were you like doing your own thing and not wanting to like get in there yeah um 
I wasn't really active in the in the in the Yoyo community. No, I don't think so. But um, I did play a lot of games on on Yoyo, like the sandbox. I don't know if you remember yeah. that. Yeah. The, yeah. So the online sandbox thing, and we would would just download like uh, Crime Life and. Um, yeah, they, Crime Life. They need to be led by uh, uh, Jesse Fenbrooks. And we would just play those games and be like, how did they make this? And be like, so, like, so excited and like, yeah, excited and cool stuff. So that, yeah. that's like, how I, but I, I never um, like posted anything or was involved in some online community that came like much later. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I guess like it was like a thirst. It was more like just browsing games and thinking just that like, how did they manage to create this thing? Mm -hmm. I remember having that feeling when I saw like I don't know if you played this game in there uh, in the sandbox. Um, it was like a little like mouse with a knife, and he would kind of like he was like a platformer, and he was able like to throw the knife, and it was like a, a like a stealth game, but I, but also like an action platformer. And I was like just like wondering like how did they manage to do that? Like <laughs> it was so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think there was there was a lot of like cool stuff about that sharing games and then people who were like way more advanced and then you'd be like, how did yeah. how did they do that? And I want to do that too. And then you'd you'd maybe download the code or something and you didn't understand. Yeah. You were just a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was there was just like a lot of fun and, and trying stuff out and yeah, and just trying. Just maybe, oh, maybe I can make this and just trying it and it would work. Yeah. Awesome. And and uh, what were your thoughts back then? Like, did you actually think about like your future? Like, did you think like, mm, yeah, like I want to do this, like when I grow up, or like I want to do this endlessly? Or, mm. yeah, I think I knew pretty early on that I wanted to do something with programming because I just noticed that I was good at it and I, I, it interested me. So, but I I always had this idea that well, I can't really make money with games because. I just just saw it like I think back then there was this real like bubble like everyone was saying oh you make games right so maybe I have this idea for an app and they would be like oh you you, you can get fit, like rich with that and then I never really had that illusion I I always like realized that yeah it's going to be really hard to make money with games so I never really expected um, this to happen and when I went to university, like I went to university as well for uh, computer science, because I always thought like, oh, I'm going to be a programmer for like maybe three days a week and then just work on my personal projects. Because that what that's what I really wanted to do, but I just never believed in uh, making money off of it. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. And like, what were your expectations? Like what, uh, what were you thinking on working on? Like, like your main uh, money income? Uh, what kind of developer you wanted to be? Oh, I I, uh, I had no idea really. Uh, <laughs> not in games. That's what I knew. I I didn't want to work like at a game studio, like a bigger bigger one. Yeah. Because I knew that um, that would be very hard, and a lot of people want want to do that. So my picture of it, I guess, was just work at some random software company. I didn't I didn't know didn't know what, but just like some random programmer dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I think that's a, uh, uh, maybe that's like the vast majority of, of like people like myself or like your fans who like started working. I started learning uh, programming because they wanted to make games, but at some point they were like, or like we were like, I gotta make a living of this and maybe turn into something else that's related. Um, and then like do stuff on their free time. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's fascinating to me that you actually didn't go that way and you persisted on, on your craft basically well I think, I think you're giving me too much credit there because <laughs> it's, it's mainly because of the other other guys in sock pub like like mainly time and and um and tom and aaron who really like but i think i was the most skeptical like yeah suck oh really yeah, but, <laughs> yeah I, didn't, I didn't really believe in that we could make money with it i think for tom and time it was kind of different they because they went to the school of arts for game design so, okay. so they already had to make games to make money uh, and i had okay. this position i was like well i'm a programmer so i can just get it get a job like at a 
somewhere. <laughs> That's crazy. I already, already did like a job at, I think it was like software for uh, oil rigs or something. Oh, I really did for a while. Yeah. Um, because he graduated like two years earlier than me. Um, so, so I was really like skeptical and I, I never like considered selling, selling stuff. Um, so it's, so that's, that's why stock pop has been really good for me because, um, yeah, they kind of helped me gain the confidence to like, you know, well, maybe, maybe we can really do this. Okay. And the, how, how did that get started? Like, um, maybe I've already heard the story, um, maybe on the conference, uh, the GDC conference. Um, but like, yeah, how did you guys, you, you, you guys met on a, on a game jam? Was it on the global game jam event? Um, no, it was, so, um, I think Tom knew Timon from, uh, the HKU. Um, you. and yeah. And my, my brother who also made games, uh, until like recently. So he had, actually had his own company. He knew Aaron from, uh, events like. So you have these couple of events based around Utrecht, um, like the Dutch Game Garden you used to have and like Indie Meetup. So that's where he knew Aaron from. And then my brother kind of linked me to Aaron because like, hey, this this guy is also doing like the sort of stuff you're doing and making these small games and stuff. Okay. And then I think I added Aaron on Skype without ever having seen him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like, hey, we should make a game together. Like, yeah, yeah maybe uh, a game about hitchhiking like yeah yeah it never really got off the ground and then i think um so we all did ludum there also so yeah. i used to do ludum there on my own like in my bedroom um and then aaron invited us uh, to his parents house who were on vacation uh, so me and my brother and simon was there this is the first time i met simon and um like right away we kind of realized like oh this really clicks and let's do like, like let's do this more often and then we kind of continued doing ludum there together and then uh later tom also joined to the ludum there get togethers i think at first he was a bit too nervous to come but um eventually he did and then um simon and, and aaron invited me to this like meetup but i was i was still Two hours i lived two hours away from utrecht with my parents because i was okay like seven, i was 17 or something so they invited me to hey like let's meet up here and then talk about stuff and i was like well i have to travel all the way there <laughs> but okay <laughs> so i agreed and then i, I, I we, we came to this bar and then they like ordered beers but i couldn't because i was 17 so yeah i ordered a cola <laughs> and Aaron and time talked about this idea of like starting a like a games collective basically and then uh, like it would be like more easy to handle uh taxes and finance and stuff and okay we were like dominant and me were just like yeah let's do it <laughs> so <laughs> I, think, I really think uh, like aaron and diamond are the most like architects from back then so, got it so that's kind of how it started yeah cool that's really cool yeah i, I actually didn't know a bunch of those details like from that story like I kind of knew, had a, an idea based on like what's available on Twitter and what's, uh, what's available on the uh, conference. Um, mm. So yeah, it's, that, that's really cool. And then you basically, I, I think it was like, oh crap, right? The, the first game that you <laughs> guys made together. Uh, yeah, so the first game we did uh, at Global Game Jam was actually seven question marks. I don't know if you know that game. We never officially released it. Um, and that was like a, a sandbox. It was pretty good. I don't know why we didn't release that instead of, oh crap, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so it was like a sandbox um, game basically where you had to, to, to um, get coins and like do these quests and stuff. Um, and the, 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 your goal was to like ascend to the afterlife or whatever. And then there would be this God because the theme was ritual. So there would be this God and- okay were certain things that weren't allowed like uh punching each other and then uh we aaron made this thing that um had like an online interface and we could uh have that on our mobile phones and so people would play and then in the back we would be be there and there would be all these buttons that would 
do stuff in the game. So we could like make a make a make a thundercloud hover over someone. And then that's really then, cool. Yeah. So and like make an earthquake or something. Um, that was the first game we made. We like all made together, and then Oh Crab was the second one, and then we, we never really did that. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, so the you initially that the the you initially had this idea of like oh like we're gonna be working together and like making the same game, or was it like clear from the start that you were going to be working everyone like on different games and just like market your, yourself uh yourselves as, as one group yeah um so the thing was that we always like we did live there with together with the three with the three times a year with everyone yeah that was really the only thing we did um and so we started sock pop with this idea of like oh we should make a collective um So it, it always started from this this point of not working together on one game, even though we could maybe at some point, but yeah. always like, solo. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, so, like, I mean, I, I think I found you because of Lisa, right? Um. Mm -hmm. Um. Possibly because of another of your games, uh, but like, when did you first felt like, hey, you know, like I'm getting actually some followers of like people randomly on the internet, like some people like my game. When, when did you start to get that that feeling of like an opportunity there? Yeah, um, I think uh, so. Before Lisa, I, I, the first couple of games I finished were all for Ludum there, and we just kind of like personal stuff that I, I did. Um, and then through Skype, I think, I'm, I met this guy named Takori, who, is, yeah. who doesn't make games anymore. I don't know if you know them. Yeah. Uh, and they're from, um, from Australia. Uh, and then I came in this, this Skype group that was called DevJet. It doesn't exist anymore. And that was really the first time I connected with other people doing similar stuff and I was like whoa okay. there's all these people who make stuff I think my Twitter before that was also in Dutch and was just like me posting jokes or something <laughs> and then um that's kind of how I how I learned about the, the indie community and like people posting gifs and I was like oh I should I should do that too and then in the when I went to do Ludum there at Diamond's house or Aaron's house we on Saturday we would, we would always do gif contest So we would post a GIF on Twitter and then see who gets the most retweets. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how it's like my my Twitter following started growing, I guess. And then at a certain point I had 1,000, 2,000 followers. And I'm like, like, damn, I have 2,000 followers. Like if I say something, maybe 2,000 people will read it. Uh, so that's kind of how I, I started like, oh, this is kind of a real thing now. And then the, the biggest realization came when uh, I sent in Lisa for like a Dutch, the Dutch Game Awards, which don't, which doesn't exist anymore. Okay. They're Dutch Game Awards. Um, and it won the, the student art prize. And at the time I was kind of like, well, this is just a prize, like whatever, what does it mean? And then over time, it, the realization kind of grew like, whoa, I, I got like a, a national prize for making games, even though in my direct, like, um, Like people I knew personally didn't really take much interest in what I made, but then people online and now even people in my own country like recognized my work. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe I am, this is what I do. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe <laughs> this is my calling or whatever. So awesome. I can, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I guess that's how I like, like, uh, like a uh, start, like, The realization came that oh I'm I'm actually kind of good at this I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so one random question. I know you play like the ukulele or the guitar. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Do you still use that like for your games or not as much? 
Yeah, so it's right here. There, but it, it broke it broke recently. So oh. I went no, some more. Now I fixed it. I fixed it again. So now oh, I okay. Can, so I plan to make more music this year, but it's always like um so when I'm making a game, I'm already probably late with it. <laughs> so then the first thing I cut is like new music for it, which is kind of a shame, really. But it's mm. just like I I can reuse old music. I I like it when it when a game have has new music, but it just takes time. So yeah, that's really just the first thing I cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I remember. Um... Yeah, like on your Ludum, Ludum there games, uh, you you used the guitar a lot, right? Like I remember the like the music for for Lisa or the what's uh, this other game called? And, and the little skeleton and the oh yeah, um, spooky ghost wheel time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a great game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember those and and like. I've always felt that you like pay a lot of attention to the small little details and like sound design because I remember like the sensation of that skeleton walking and jumping it was just like so crisp like like so crisp but like not like not literally crisp like but just this sensation mm -hmm. of like that actually feels like a skeleton jumping like <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I think I do pay a lot of attention to to stuff like that like um just how stuff stuff feels and, and such is very important i think to the way i make games yeah 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 i think anyone who plays your games can tell like of those small little details um like for example on, on your most recent game uh pocket watch yeah like you can also tell that there's just like so many different details that went into it like no wonder why you spend like uh 250 hours right <laughs> yeah four four hundred fifty two hundred or four hundred four hundred four hundred yeah. oh that's crazy yeah, yeah that's way more than that's i <laughs> yeah that was great yeah i have never worked on the game so so much but it's just like stuff like making a, a city that's kind of detailed yeah. and comfortable just takes a lot of time you can't just sit down and be like okay today i'm going to make a city it just yeah, needs no. time to boil that's that's kind of what we call it ah. so when you make like a, a good dish it needs time to to to, to cook yeah so yeah. it just takes time to like, to cook. awesome yeah yeah like pocket watch um i haven't finished that game um but like yeah when i started playing it i was like dude like like it, it, i i just couldn't stop thinking that It's crazy how you like take an idea like this um, scaling shader that you used for it. And like, it seemed to me like you took that idea and uh, you played with that idea, like with what, with that, you know, like um, kind of like, uh, what, words did, what word did you use? Like ambiguity, like this, you know, like, And I'm thinking Spanish, like my head is bringing me the word in Spanish, but I can think it in, in English. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, you have like this dreamlike idea of what you want to accomplish. And uh, so I think that, yeah, I could really tell that you started with an idea of how you wanted it to feel and look. And like, yeah, when I was playing it, like how you could jump and like move and like how just like the world felt like this one single piece like this like giant clock and like every little thing was like taking you know like uh very synchronized yeah like just thinking that you actually do that so quick and so many times you know because you have to uh release a game every two months mm -hmm. that's that's unbelievable um like how yeah like ooh. i mean you already answered me um like yeah just like it's it's still kind of crazy to me to think you know, about like how you're kind of like mastering your own style on the games you make. And I had this real realization when I saw Hillionaut, because when I saw that, I'm like, yo, that's exactly what Ruvna's style is. Like, boom, like that's, <laughs> you know, like right there. Uh, at mm -hmm. least that's how I felt when I saw your, uh, your game, right? Mm -hmm. So 
do you think you have mastered your own style do you think you're like halfway through it um or do you think that you're still exploring more uh different ideas yeah i don't really i don't really see it as as like um like conquering my own style i guess if it, it's it's more like i try to de develop new new stuff and i kind of have these tricks that i use that i kind of add to my arsenal if, if i okay. if i learn something. so for example i started using gradients in helio knot on the crystals yeah and i started using that in fishy as well um so mm -hmm. i th th that's kind of like how it develops i guess and i don't think there will be like a moment where i'll be yeah this is it this is like all that i'm gonna yeah. do from now on. it's just gonna be well maybe you know this is interesting to try for example with pocket watch it was like you said this shader and it was i um kind of because uh, Popus Tower, Tom's game, uses that shader as well for a 3D environment. And I was like, wait, yeah. wait, what if I just take the whole game? Oh, I also used it for Pyramida, just on the separate yeah. sprite. Um, but then I was like, oh, well, maybe if I just take this shader and put it on the whole game, maybe it will just look good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and that's, that's, yeah, so this, there keep, there's, yeah, there's still these new ideas that I want to try out. And um, it, whether it's like graphical or uh, like in like technical, I think those are very interlinked with me. So I don't think there will be this point where I'll just be like, oh, now, now I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like an ongoing thing, right? It's always gonna, gonna evolve as you develop more games. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the exciting part as well, I think um just just getting like better and different at making stuff yeah kind of like rediscovering yourself through what you make mm. yeah 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 that's really amazing um and uh yeah like w let's talk a little bit more about like um uh, the techniques behind your visual style because that's i think really interesting um, and what I mean by that is like the fact that you don't use like game makers, 3d native functions, like you mm -hmm. actually use your own, um, rendering technique for that. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on behind that? Yeah. So, um, the thing is that I'm just too, I'm really stubborn and I, I, I can't switch to unity cause I'm, cause I'm too used to game maker and, um, GameMaker has 3D functionality, but it's way different. To, yeah. Like I feel it's way different from the rest of the engine. Um, and so I used to do this fake 3D stuff where it's like, uh, if, if stuff moves along the, the up axis, then I just draw it higher and make a shadow below. So that's kind of how it started, I guess. It's very, very basic. Then I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe I can make stuff rotate as well. And then I, I made stuff rotate and it kind of worked. I was like, okay, cool. And maybe I can make stuff may, maybe like look then look up and down. I think Ollie and Bali was the first real game where I made like a camera that goes all the way around. I was like, okay, cool. And then um, I think it was around the time of Deer Hunter 2 that it was like, well, wait a minute. So maybe I can do perspective as well. <laughs> yeah. Because it really that all that really is is because I I did play around with making a three D engine as well for uni, for university, um, in JavaScript which I never really finished but, um, so I did make a like a proper rasterization engine once, um, which was like used, um, like matrices and stuff stuff that yeah. you really don't have to make but then I realized like well perspective really is all it really is is that stuff that's farther away is smaller and closer to the center of the screen. And then I was like, oh, maybe I can, maybe I can make that, you know, maybe I can make something that, that looks, looks like that. Um, and then I did, and then I was like, oh, that's cool. That's kind of cool. Maybe I can make like a game with it. <laughs> and then it, it was kind of this really organic uh, way for me to, to, to make stuff look interesting. It wasn't yeah. really ever like, oh, I'm, I'm 
it, it's not like a statement that like, like oh i'm not going to use unity i'm thinking i'm really stupid for not using just using <laughs> learning unity and doing 3d stuff but um what i do get is that, is that there's this kind of unique sense to the way my games look and this kind of inherit to to the way i do 3d um so th that's kind of what i gained from it but i wouldn't yeah. recommend anyone people have asked me like oh can you share the the code and i was like well maybe i can make like a 3d engine for people that's like easy to understand but then i also think of all the limitations that it comes with yeah uh, well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> think about it a little more before i do yeah and i think like yeah like you shouldn't be sorry for not learning unity like i think because as you said it's really what gives you that like unique style of your you know the, the visual aspect of your games and mm -hmm. um to me the part that's like really interesting is that it's game maker um and that like the fact that you are using a scripting language to create a rendering well like uh, more like a, a a set of tools for perspective mm -hmm. and uh yeah like because game maker i mean like before the yo, -Yo compiler um i remember it like getting slow if you didn't like optimize stuff right so like do you try this 3d stuff before uh the yo, -Yo compiler or was it like almost the time when it arrived that you started playing with those ideas uh i, I think yo, yo compiler existed when i started but i didn't really know how to use it or what it was um so deer hunter 2 and labyrinth which are both 3d games don't use yo, -Yo compiler and helionaut also didn't until oh. um very late in development i was like oh there's this thing yo, -Yo compiler okay maybe i can get it to work aaron already we already use it for all in Bali as well okay so ask aaron how to ins install um visual studio which you need for it and he was like kind of reluctant he's like yeah here's this tutorial and then then i made it and then it worked and i was like oh it's so much faster now but then there was all this stuff that was broken in the game because i didn't oh, really? account yeah there's there's some stuff that you have to account for for like um because it's compiled uh variables suddenly get the get a get a type which it didn't before. Oh, okay. So there's certain stuff that I used to do, like multiply booleans with uh, other stuff, with like like uh, numbers, and, yeah. and it would kind of break down. So I had to go back and fix all of this. So I, there were a lot of bugs in the game when it released, and it was partly due to uh, switching to Yoyo compiler. Got um, it. Yeah, but it, it definitely helps. It's still really slow. I think Fishy 3D, it's like, like like super slow as well and then people complain because they have this like gaming rig and it, it has like a super <laughs> beefy graphics card and they were like why can't i run this this, this basic <laughs> game on my gaming rig? I'm like yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's all cpu based basically. yeah so yeah exactly so I, I can't multi-thread as well even even though like i learned all this stuff in uni in university i can't use it because it's game game maker yeah i always feel like this this like this is looming deadline that i like at some point i have to i'm going to have to let go of game maker but um <laughs> I, I never really do <laughs> uh, yeah uh, you're still using the uh game maker studio 1.4 yeah 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 so i i heard on your live streaming that you you don't you don't you didn't like the interface of the new game maker right uh game maker 2 yeah no i don't too. no i don't because i think there, there's this like zooming stuff and oh uh, yeah like um, with the notes yeah and there's like the editor isn't like with it doesn't work with like windows windows it works with like an uh like a frames per second stuff like the, the, yeah the editor actually has like a frame rate um yeah i i don't know i think simon spent time like wanting to get used to it because he was like oh i just had to switch but he also really didn't like it and there's a lot of voices like online that are like well we really don't like the new game maker interface um yeah, yeah i don't 
<laughs> but I'm, I'm just really stubborn like i said like i'm, I'm still using game maker 1.4 which i used also in 2016 <laughs> i'm the person that's like sticks to this old stuff i'm trying to not do that more um yeah, yeah. what's what's your favorite favorite feature of game maker studio like why is it that you um are so attached to it like and not that not that that's a bad thing but like what mm -hmm. is it that makes it hard to switch to something else it's just the simplicity of it it's mm -hmm. just really it's just it's both that I'm, I'm used to it but also the simplicity of it is just like super simple to draw something on the screen i hear tom complain about this a lot that like if, if he goes to make a ui in unity he's like i just want to draw a rectangle on the screen and you <laughs> can't and in game maker you can draw like anything yeah. like it's very simple and then you can add a complexity yourself and then if something goes wrong you know where it goes wrong because you made it yeah so that's what i really enjoy uh about using game maker i yeah i actually toyed with the idea of like maybe i'll make my like my own engine or something uh-huh but yeah that's like just a lot of work oh yeah for like, sure I was going to ask you about that, actually, like if, if you entertain that idea of like doing mm -hmm. your own thing at some point, um, because like even even uh, I, I even thought like, why doesn't Game Maker create like this? Uh, why don't they release like the, the compiler itself? Mm -hmm. And like without the IDE, maybe so that you can use that compiler and basically do things the way you want kind of like allowing you to upgrade your tools without limitation i don't know if you know what i mean yeah yeah no i do i think there are there are like the people like yellow afterlife i don't know if you know them they I make a lot so. of they make a lot of uh, really useful like extensions to game maker like a um, live edit, so you can run the game and edit it at the same time. And there's really? a lot of useful, there are a lot of useful like different stuff. There's also, I'm not sure what it's called, but it sounds like what you mean as well, like a different IDE for Game Maker. He also made- Oh yeah, I saw that. Parrot, is it called Parrot or something? Like a bird, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, but Jello Afterlife makes makes like a lot of stuff. I don't use it because I'm too stubborn. But there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of useful stuff that he made. Um, so if if I have problems with Game Maker, I usually go to this side. Wait, I'll send it to you. All right. There you go. So like so, yeah, yellow. It's just a lot of, of cool resources. That, um, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. So I don't know if you use Game Maker as well yourself. Um, yeah, like me personally, like I stopped using Game Maker uh, some time ago. Because in my personal career, like I, I loved making games, uh, but I also like just loved programming and like user interface design. So mm -hmm. I kind of went down that direction um and then i switched to mac and there was like just this limitation of like oh i cannot use game maker anymore on, on mac uh -huh. so i mean that was before game maker for mac and game maker uh studio 2 so i kind of entertained the idea of like doing things by hand i started lear i started learning c c++ but i hated it and um <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, I tried a, a bunch of different tools and I never really found something that I really liked. The closest thing that I could find to like, you know, uh, the easiness of like Game Maker was Love 2D. Uh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing that I didn't like about it is that it was pretty slow. Like when you actually wanted to do like more heavy stuff, mm -hmm. you had to do like find ways to optimize things because it's written in Lua. I mean, it's written in C plus uh, in C or C plus plus, but like the the actual scripting language is Lua. So, yeah, it was uh, it was cool, but it was slow. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't find something that I wanted. And at the same time, like I was just drifting into a different direction of development. 
So I stopped there. Then I kind of, uh, the most recent game that I built was uh, a little game for, for a, it's like, it's this new like feature phone. I don't know if you've seen them somewhere online. So like, you you remember those feature phones like from 10 years ago, I don't know how many years ago, like the flip, fo fl uh, flip oh. phones and the, you know, like those with hard keys. So mm -hmm. like there are new phones that look like that, which actually run on JavaScript. So they're basically like a browser. Oh, you can okay. actually use like WebGL um, to develop games for that. And uh, I was really familiar with JavaScript and I was like, yeah, I want to do something like that. And uh, my cousin and I made a, a, a game some years ago for a, a jam. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to port that to like JavaScript. <laughs> it was made in Game Maker and I just like ported that. Um, and it was actually really fun um, to make that game. It's a pretty simple game, so I didn't need it like an IDE. And, uh, but the most interesting part was that to, f to find out like this market of like these phones, these operating systems, because like in just like five, three days, like the game that I uploaded, because it's a very small marketplace, like it had like 2000 downloads. And I was like, whoa, like it's, like it's not even a good game. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really cool, man. Yeah. And it's just like this mark, this new market that doesn't have a lot of games because, well, like, there's just not such an awareness of this platform. Um, but yeah, like I just thought about the, pot the potential of that. Like people could just like make really cool games. And there's a guy, uh, his name is Christian that I follow on Twitter and he's creating uh, like a 3D game of ships and he's like making them like an online game. And that's really interesting to think because it's like a, you know, it's a smartphone, but it's like it's something different than what we are used to nowadays. And it's just such a new market and people are just, the games that are uploaded there, like, to be honest, they are like these shitty games that, like, you know, like uh, Candy Crush and stuff like that, but like worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's, uh, that's my experience with uh, game development in general. That's the last thing that I created. Yeah. Actually, I, I wanted to ask you something too, like related to this, which is like, what do you think about the web as a platform for gaming like at, like are you entertaining the idea of making games that run directly on the browser or is that something that you don't really look into yeah i i really like uh like web and the reason is that you can just send someone a link and they can just play the game because I, I i think now with uh games the problem is that you can't really like you have to kind of know already how to play games if if you want to if you want to play a new game so yeah and all the games i make either need to be downloaded on itch.io and people really don't really know that and then they have to download this that xe like xe and they are they, the computer doesn't like it and like the enter virus or they have to have steam and then they already like know how to do games, but a lot of people don't. And with web, you can just send a link to someone and they can just play it. So that's it, like amazing to me. Yeah. Um, and the reason I don't do it is because you, you can really sell web games. Mm. Got it. That's, yeah. that's the whole problem I have with it is that you can't um, sell it. Cause I'm not really bothered by it. Like maybe it's a bit slower or something, but I'm really not really bothered by that. Um, but yeah, if, if I was making it for free, I'd probably think about switching to web as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And each year doesn't have like a, it doesn't it have like a, a, a player kind of thing that allows you to like publish a, 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 an HTML5 game or something like that. Yeah. I think it might like, I, I think it used to not support paid um things that run wow. in browser maybe it does now but like steam doesn't anyway so for, for suck i'm not really doing that um what i am doing is for for suck stories of course that you can play the game in browser that's what yeah. i really thought about a lot like if you want to be able to share your stuff you made um online yeah yeah by the way that uh you made that in game maker 
Yes. Crazy. So, so you exported the HTML5 version for that? Oh no. So the the web version is like a, like totally different. It's just written in JavaScript. It's like oh, that's a, crazy. So it just reads the file and then it it it, it has the same code. Like I, I I sort of ported the code by just copy pasting and then fixing the errors. Yeah. But there's still some inconsistencies. There's still some stories that don't load properly properly because just because um it's a like a different stuff thing running it um so it's not it's not a game maker export you can export with game maker i never really tried that though i should i should <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i think so, if you exported sorry go ahead yeah I, I th the thing with engines and stuff is that uh i used i there's a lot of people who like kind of float between engines and like i'm not sure what to pick and a lot of question that we get a lot is like, what engine do you use? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I kind of have that as well to some extent. Like, I have this like really long lasting relation with Game Maker, and I know the, all the ins and outs. And then I have to, if I have to switch, I have to kind of pick someone something, and you're just kind of floating. So I'm just kind of like, well, I just I'll just stick with this limited thing, and, and at least that's that's like my boundaries. So you know what I mean? Like, it's like, um, like those are like the, the boundaries which I can work within. Yeah. And then if you can pick anything, it's like, well, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. I think even like tweeted once that limitation is what, you know, makes creativity or something like that. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I kind of do. Yeah. I do believe in that a lot. There's this, um, there's this this musician called Jerry Paper, who is like yeah. my favorite musician of all time. And they made this album called uh, Chameleon World. And it yes. was entirely made on a Casio keyboard. And that just amazed me because it's my favorite album of them. Um, and it was just all made on a Casio keyboard. Because 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 they were like, well, um, they spent so much time tweaking like uh, drum sounds and they were like, oh, fuck it. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm just going to take this very limited thing and I'm going to work within those boundaries. And that just makes it a lot more fun for yourself as well. Just not yeah. having to worry about all that stuff. It's like, and th we do that with the Patreon as well, I think. Like it's very limiting to work within two months. It's like super limiting, but that's also the fun part. And it's like what makes the games the way they are for a large part. Um, so I'm, I'm really a big proponent of imposing limitations. Like yeah. if you have a, like a blank canvas and you can do anything, it's like, yeah, well, well, what do I do? Yeah, exactly. I completely agree with you. And, uh, I didn't know that that was your favorite album. And I didn't know that they made it completely with just like one piece of equipment. I didn't know that. It doesn't seem like it. Like when you hear that, uh, album, I couldn't tell like at all that it was made like with just a single piece of equipment no yeah uh that's crazy mm -hmm. yeah um which by the way like i also listened to jerry paper because you once like tweeted a link to a, a song of him mm -hmm. and then i started listening to it and i was like oh this is really nice like i really liked um jerry's paper work and i just like started following him i don't know if mm -hmm. you've heard like his most later latest work do you still listen to his latest work or yeah yeah abracadabra you mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, really, yeah it's really good like a very different i think i read a like, more recent interview in which um it was like yeah i used to think that limitations were like good but now i don't think so anymore <laughs> 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 it's definitely a good way to start at least yeah that's also the philosophy i have with with sock stories is that it's a very limited tool and that's the way it should be because then like there's just for example there's just six colors or like eight or something that you can pick from and i do that consciously because i don't want people to tweak colors all the time i just want them to pick one and then yeah be like oh this is this is all i have you know this is i can't pick another color so this is blue now <laughs> yeah and that makes it a lot more fun to make stuff for sure and it also ensures that like in the case of sock stories, like it also ensures that the, the visuals are going to be consistent, you know, across the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that too that too that, that works as well but i think the main thing like people have been asking for more advanced features in sub stories and to some extent i'm gonna add that for the mobile version but i'm also with a lot of stuff like yeah that's a bit too complicated i don't want people to spend a lot of time doing this thing that's kind of boring yeah yeah and, and that's like I, a yeah go ahead sorry, go ahead oh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like that's that's like a different audience, even like people who play um, sock stories because it's really simple and easy and like you don't have to think much versus like, oh, like now you have like this full fledged game making toy. Like it's just two different things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's just a nice way. I, I think there's this this thing that the, the people who want to get into making games um like okay so they download uni and then they just sit there and like okay what <laughs> what do i do? yeah there's so much stuff it, like where do i start and yeah then maybe a little tutorial but then there's just like that's what it was daunting for me as well like i'll have to remove a lot of unity stuff that i don't want like the physics engine and all that stuff i just don't want it and then yeah it, it would, Take a lot of time to like figure out what pieces I want to keep, um, and I think there should be this this simpler tool for people to kind of roll into game development and then just push the boundaries of that tool and then be like, okay, maybe maybe I'll move on now. But um, like like Game Maker was for me. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um. What's what's your favorite game of all time? Like uh, of all games? Yeah, like the best game for you. Oh, that's a hard one. I really, I really like Breath of the Wild, like a lot. I okay. loved it. Not everything about it was great, but I loved it anyway. Um. And then I also really like uh, Amanita's designs work. So Machinarium and uh, Samoros. Even though they're also like pretty, pretty, pretty flawed, if you ask me, but they're just um, just so such great like, things in their own genre. Um, and just, I, I was like a really, like a Zelda kid. I really loved <laughs> Zelda, like the Wind Waker, uh, Majora's Mask. She's yeah, also uh, great. Um, yeah, I th I, th I think uh, Breath of the Wild is really like groundbreaking for me. Um, maybe that one. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> yeah, thing, like, I don't really play that many games on my free time because I I feel like you know I spend all this time like testing games and making games that I don't yeah. really want. To to play them necessarily um, yeah but i know what I you mean yeah for sure and I, I kind of knew you were gonna answer like a nintendo game <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah i love nintendo i don't think like i i think i tried a couple of like other companies games i think i tried maybe skyrim once or stuff but i, I just really don't like them <laughs> I don't yeah know why. <laughs> I think Nintendo always has this sense of of play and um like they they were a toy company and that's that's how I I kind of see it as well. It should be like an interesting toy that you play. Yeah. Um yeah, not like a movie, right? Because I think Yeah, like I, I I like stuff like uh, Uncharted that I like I really don't don't like those games. Because I'm when I ever play those, I'm like I just want to see the movie <laughs> yeah i don't want to play this i just want to watch it uh, and i think i think i always ask this question like why should this be a game and not something else like a comic book or uh, or a movie yeah. that's a really good question to think about when making mm -hmm. a game yeah huh i never thought about it that way like yeah why should this be a game yeah, there's also not really, that sounds like really purist, I guess. Um, for example, Pocket Watch is kind of 
like a st- like more story driven, like more than any other of our games, I think. Which um, one, sorry? Fucked Watch. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's still it's it's it draws inspiration from these these old, like, point and click games, and like like Zelda likes. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think I'll ever, ever make like uh, a very narrative heavy game because I'd, I'd just be like I, I can just write a like a story if I, if I want yeah for sure you could you can really tell that um there's this inspiration of like coming from Zelda uh, on pocket watch yeah 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 for sure yeah. Yeah. especially it, it really reminds me of uh one of my favorite Zelda games which is the uh for the Game Boy Color uh Link's Awakening Mm, yeah with the the big egg yeah with the big egg and it's also like an island and uh he also wakes up like on the on the beach shore Mm. and i never played that game actually i should oh really yes yeah but that's crazy uh, yeah bear quest which was i guess the first game was really like inspired like the whole mountain thing and like there being an egg i actually had an egg oh yeah like oh, this is this is too much like <laughs> and then i asked tom what i should put on the mountain he said a bear or like an apple or something and then yeah like, okay, bear. but yeah it was definitely inspired by um by uh, zelda for sure yeah uh, the, yeah that you're, you're completely right yeah that really resembles that and it, i think it's actually really cool to for it to be like a pear <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a giant pear and uh also, like on Link's Awakening, I remember like when I was playing it, like you know, the Game Boy Color has like all these many limitations, which I think is really fascinating to to think about. Like when back when they created that game, like the tools that they had to make those games, like they really had to like pay attention to the constraints they had because there was there were like hard limits they had like a a very limited amount of colors they could use and um, a very limited amount of like ram they could use for creating the game and uh to create such a like a masterpiece uh you know like zelda and and all these titles it really amazes me and it really um shows shows this philosophy that you have about limitation being like the source of creativity for most cases Hmm. Yeah, I think Nintendo also always has been really good at pushing uh, technology as well. Like um, maybe now not so much as, as they used to, but yeah, uh, like with, with the Nintendo, like uh, like the Wii and stuff, <laughs> and um, yeah. So and and for me, <laughs> for me, I also kind of have that, but then within the limitations of what I know and like what Game Maker can do. Because I can't really compete with the triple A people, I guess. Yeah. But it's, I guess it's if you if you follow my work for a longer time, it's, it's you can kind of see me like understanding more stuff slowly, <laughs> or understanding how to do them. Yeah. Uh, but I still feel like I'm in this this niche, where sure. <laughs> where where I am the only one like excited about because other people <laughs> already invented all this stuff, you know, like it's already standard in Unity or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's this, there's this, uh, so, so Proteus, which is also one of the, like the big inspirations I have, um, is also made entirely in, in its own engine as well, uh, which also gives this, gives us this, this feel that's very unique to the game. Okay. You, yeah. You know, that game. Proteus is, it, it's like this, uh, very colorful one per, uh, first person, like exploration game. Is it, is it? Yeah. Yeah. By Ed Key and someone else yeah um yeah i remember it i've never played it but i i remember that game so that was also entirely made like in in their own engine and you can really kind of kind of feel it yeah and i'm not sure like i can always kind of tell if a game is made in unity or unreal or Uh, yeah for sure and i really just dislike that feeling like oh (laughs) a unity and i yeah uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm yeah. not 
probably like if if a if like a like the the average player plays my game, they will probably not notice. And I'm I'm always a big proponent of like not caring too much about what you're using, but about the end result. Yeah. Uh, but, but I don't know. I just just like the the process of like struggling a lot with limitations of game maker and then trying to work around them in uh, creative ways. That's really cool. Yeah. By the way, um, I don't know about your time. I don't know if you because it's way. Um, later with you than it is with me so i don't know if oh. you um i forgot to ask you like about your timing yeah no i have time oh, okay yeah all right so yeah um, i think the computer that you use is a microsoft surface right yeah i used to use that one yeah but it uh, uh it broke it broke it so broke? i have a new now. yeah I oh used it. <laughs> like a long time but uh oh, okay i have a macbook now actually oh really yeah but i i just installed uh windows on it and <laughs> I, I use an on um, like a unlicensed version of windows yeah it, it still has this activate windows thing in the corner in the, the right corner but yeah <laughs> i used to use your people's right yeah yeah and uh, how was your experience with that like because I, i know that it has like this uh touch screen and maybe it comes with like a little pen mm -hmm. did you yeah, use I, that at all no <laughs> i didn't. <laughs> didn't use it at all um <laughs> yeah i just i just i have a really hard time buying stuff i don't know why but um my brother had had a surface and then i was like oh is, is that a good computer and he was like yeah it's good and i was like okay i'll, I'll, I'll guess i'll get that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> didn't work yeah, out it wasn't really that great the thing yeah. I, i mostly had it like uh connected to a monitor and a, and a keyboard um yeah yeah the the thing that i annoyed me the most was that sometimes it wouldn't boot up and then it would like take a long time of like like uh shutting it down then rebooting and then it wouldn't boot uh yeah against the end of its, its lifespan and everyone was telling me to buy a new computer but i was just, like stuff super stubborn but i didn't <laughs> yeah that's that's funny crazy and uh, so how uh kind of going back to the conversation about uh uni and uh, your career stuff like that yeah Um, so you went to school and, uh, you learned fundamentals of computer science. Maybe you even learned like fundamentals of computer graphics. How much, how much did that influence your work? Like, would you say that if it wasn't for what you learned there, you wouldn't be able to do what you do today in terms of like, you know, technically speaking? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think it had a, this huge impact. Mm. Uh, Because it, it's it was like <laughs> I, I guess it's kind of cocky to say, but it really didn't. Uh, we did get computer graphics, but it was mostly uh, us building a ray tracer and learning some um, calculus. Um, but I don't really use those techniques too much now, so I I don't really use matrices. Um, I guess I do use some of the intuition and maybe some of the like like just general thinking. Yeah. Mm. But I, I like there there's also always been this 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 line apart from school that's been like me just trying out new stuff and working within game maker. Yeah. Uh, there 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 are some things that I use. For example, uh complexity is something that I think about more now since uni. So if I have an algorithm that's slow, it's like okay, I can think about this in a in like a computer science way. But um, the university was very um, theoretical, so not really about like literal programming, but more about algorithm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I wouldn't say it influenced too much. I think the the biggest thing really is that um, it gave me a lot of free time and some some. Like some money because in netherlands yeah. you, you get um 
you get like you can loan money for going to like a scholarship school. yeah it's kind of like a scholarship but it's, it's like for everyone and if okay. your parents are less well off you actually get also get like uh just just money to to go to, that's not that's not a loan uh to go to school and the tuition here is lower because the it's government funded so i'm very lucky to to live in this country where that's possible and um like going to university is really it did do a lot for me because i so i had a lot of free time um and i could move to a city which like to utrecht uh, got it so otherwise it, that would have been very hard for sure yeah. cool so it was like a stepping stone on your career yeah 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 for nice sure. nice yeah and uh where where do you think you're going to um long term like in a few years mm. how do you see yourself like what's do you have any idea of where you want to go or are you like just playing it by ear and you know going through what you do yeah um so we're going we're probably going to go to one game a month this year which is like already a, a pretty big step because we're now feeling like oh, we're a little bit established and um so i'll have more time for for other projects and i do, i do want to like i do want to finish uh suck stories this year um so do more personal projects of that um and for the long term it's really a case of the main thing i think that i think about is just me wanting to to continue making games for a long time and to find a way to, to do that without uh, getting too tired of it, basically. So to it's, it's been like a personal struggle because I tend to work like really long hours sometimes. And um, I watched this, this uh, GDC talk by Jeff Vogel, who is like a very, like a, a person who has been making games for like a super long time. Um, I think, his company is called Spiderweb Games or something. Okay. And um, there's this thing in the games industry that everyone is very young. So there's there's rarely anyone that's above 40 or 50. And the reason is that people basically just get tired of it and it's just too much hassle. So, I'm, so the long-term goal is really just to find a way to do this sustainably, I guess. Um, so I'm not really sure how that's gonna gonna work out in the end. So I guess that's the long term goal, and then also learning to collaborate, maybe because okay. I'm, I'm I'm very relu reluctant to always. I'd rather just do stuff myself because um, uh, you know it's kind of messy to work together, but now i'm more thinking along the lines of there's only so much you can do on your own and maybe if i work to, i work together with other people i could achieve more in terms of what what size of game you could make okay uh, so that's 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 something i'm playing with but like not in the in the foreseeable future i think okay so uh you're also like basically thinking how to even make bigger games like is that also like a thought that you have like like is that something that you want to do uh make be able to make bigger games yeah i think so i made soak look deluxe uh mm -hmm. last year and that was a project that took a year but also a year of making Patreon games at the same time um and that really like took a big toll on me like also in my personal life and um so so i'm really thinking about how to to manage that because in a way making games this fast is also a bit easier because you have this excuse of, of like it's, it's sort of an excuse right like oh well you know it's not perfect but i made it in two weeks or in two months and with with a bigger personal project you don't really ha get to say that really it's like well this is just what I made and um, I didn't make it any better than this. Uh, so that there's kind of this bigger pressure 
And uh, I think I restarted Sokoloka Deluxe uh, two times, <laughs> like from scratch, just because I wasn't sat <laughs> satisfied with it. Um, and it, it like the the plan was to make it in two months, and then it turned into a full year. So um, I'm really reluctant to do a project that when I'm starting out, it's just like, okay, this is going to take three years because I know it's going to be longer than that. And I, I know I'm going to lose motivation multiple times for the project. So I'm, so like, if I do a personal project, I'm going to try to, to always choose stuff that's just going to be finished in six months that I can make in six months, something like that. Yeah. Because there's this notion, I think, that it just takes years to make a video game. And I, I, re I just don't want to. I just don't want to do like three years of this one thing. Because yeah. you'll be sick of it after year one. You'll just be totally sick of it. That's that's what I'm convinced about. So if I, I do want to do bigger projects, but not like multiple year ones yet. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um... And yeah, because like burnout, burnout is different is, is definitely something to watch out for. I don't know if you have experienced burnout uh, working in sock pop or if yeah, like how how has how has that been for you? Like, do you experience burnout regularly? Not at all. Mm, not not really. No, I, there's there is like days that that it doesn't go so well or that I don't have. Uh, a lot of motivation but I never really experienced burnout before uh, and I think maybe a reason for that is that we have a lot of freedom as well so yeah it's true that we do have this high pressure thing that we have to make something but what something is is that something that you can decide right and there's no real financial like problem if if you don't make something great if, it, if it's yeah. not that great then it's just like well we'll get a new game in two weeks and maybe that's good and and so there's it's kind of it kind of makes it easier on us in a way and i think if you have this external pressure of like a manager or having your game needing to sell well or you have to close the studio that might make a lot of more pressure for people um than if you just make stuff like like we do yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense but that's and, just and a theory i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it definitely sounds like it um because i think burnout comes from yeah it definitely comes from not having this freedom and because uh, the way that I have experienced it uh, in my in my career uh, as a front-end developer is is basically just that like it reaches a point where you feel like you want to do something and uh, something that's that you feel proud of but then there's limitations on budget there's limitations on time there's limitations on stuff mm -hmm. that require you to work hard without making it worth. And I think, like, on you, uh, on you guys' end, um, because you're working on something that you actually love to work on, that that's completely yours, that you're like 100% uh, the owner of that. Like, you work super hard, um, but that's worth it. So, I think that burnout comes when work you work hard, but it's not worth it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah that that could make make sense like if if you work for a boss and then they have to work overtime and it's like well yeah well it's but it's not my pro like it's not my yeah. project yeah yeah um, yeah i think that's the observation that i have about that um yeah and how do you like so you don't have burnout you have this like system that allows you to master your skills you know which is like to create games on small periods of, of time and like releasing them constantly mm -hmm. so 
how how's your experience with and dealing with social media or like bad reviews or like you know like some of the mm-hmm. quote unquote negative stuff um is that something that bothers you is that something that you rarely think about or yeah i, th- I think we've gotten a bit of of that like negative reviews and um like just the kind of negative comments um but the the vast majority that of comments that we get is just like super positive so we do like there's this human tendency to to focus on the negative stuff right yeah Um, so we we do like take kind of uh look at those more and like i always try to like take people seriously um if they have a problem with with like a game or something um but I also try to remember that uh, like if, if I were, were to play it like a game or something like online and I liked it, I would never even think of leaving a, like a comment or a review. And I think most people are like that. So I just try to think of all the people who played the game and just had a good time and then moved on to something else, you know? Yeah. So that's <laughs> how I, I deal with that, like, like the numbers game. But if like... Because if you have a problem with the game, then you're much more likely to leave a comment or like leave a yeah. review. Yeah, yeah that's... So that, and, and we also honestly didn't get a lot of crit- critique, I think, not compared to some other people um, who have like a harder time. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, so... Is there something that you do because you, you mentioned that you were thinking like in the long term you were thinking about like how how can i um make this sustainable right mm-hmm. um, basically so uh, are you also like contemplating like exercise diet and stuff like that when you think about that or or yeah like how do you approach that aspect of your life because um it's easy to just like sit down on the computer and do work uh, but then like a lot of things can also like just you can miss out on a lot on a lot of things uh just for being working right so what's your approach on that like do you try to keep your life balanced or yeah yeah um so I, I used to struggle with this 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 stuff a lot actually. So I would just like my like working was kind of like a coping mes- mechanism for me. Um, so if I if I felt bad or something, I would just kind of push it away and just go work. Um, and then of course that kind of like always had gave me big problems because I wasn't really facing up to these like emotional problems that I had. Um, so the last year really has been really me taking it a bit more easy and then also focusing on other aspects of life so i do for example i do uh rock climbing like bouldering in the oh really yeah um i've been really getting into that and um just like uh meeting up with friends and stuff um and so i i always thought i always had this idea that okay if i don't really push myself i'm not going to make anything good um but then what i noticed is that i was just like this year i was like more relaxed and like like happier and stuff and i started just making better games <laughs> um yeah i always I always had this notion of oh i have to you know really buckle down to to make stuff and you do sometimes um but it's it's always good to to relax and i think that's also something that Jeff Vogel said in the GDC talk, um, like if something is rubbing you the wrong way, you should go and fix it. Like if you're not okay with the way you're working now or your work-life balance, um, then you should go fix it. Because you, if you, if you, you should always ask yourself, can I do this for another 40 years? And if the answer is no, you should change something. So that's kind of how I've been thinking about it. And then of course as well, like if you're working and you're sad because you're missing out on stuff, um, then your work isn't going to be as productive because you're because you're going to be like, sad and stuff. So it's always 
like I'm a huge proponent of um, if, if you're not excited about what you're doing, sometimes it's good to put, like push through it and uh, like persevere, but sometimes it's also good to like relax and do something else and do something fun and then come back with a better uh, idea. Yeah. Or like a better perspective. Yeah. Awesome. That's a super cool answer. Yeah. Completely agree with that. Um, nice. I, I didn't know that you actually like to boulder. Um, I used to be really into bouldering um, about two years ago. Um, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been, I think three years or something. Three years. Nice. Yeah. So pretty, pretty recently, but yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a lot of fun, like uh, problem solving and also. Yeah. Yeah. And like the community, right? Like just like being with friends and like, I don't, yeah. I, yeah, like just like shouting, like, yeah, like, I don't know what you shout, uh, on your language, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we say LA or we say, um, like from the French word or we say, uh, come on, come up okay yeah. Yeah. yeah no but yeah it, it is it is really fun like also as a like a social thing and for um, sure i think like if you have something that's like that that's fun you should just, just go out and do it you know and um yeah yeah absolutely if you, yeah if you, if you if you don't like in, in the context of, of games if you don't want to yeah, it's it's always a thin line, right? Because sometimes you you feel like oh you don't want to work, but you have this motivation externally, like oh I have to finish this project. Well, okay, I'll just do it. Um, and then sometimes it's better to just like relax and do something else. Um, but the uh, like the deadlines we have always really help <laughs> with that um, that this, those decisions. Because if I'm close to a deadline, I want to make the game as good as I can. And then I'll just like say no and like do like mostly work. And then yeah. after that, I usually relax. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. And uh, I actually like, uh, like the, the idea that I had about you is that you were more introverted. Uh, but then I watched the, uh, the stream, uh, the sock pop stream. Mm -hmm. And I, and I thought like, Oh, like Ruben is actually more extroverted. Like you were talking a lot and like engaging a lot on, uh, on like the stuff, like just talking. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, I don't know that that really kind of like I had this like idea that you were that maybe you were somewhat more introverted. Uh, yeah. But like no, like it, it's turned out to be the opposite. Would you agree with that or like how would you describe your personality? Um. Yeah, so I, I used to be a lot more introverted and I, I still am in a way that I just enjoy being by myself. Um, but like, uh, since I've been working more on like my, my, uh, my, uh, um, how do you call that? Like my moods and stuff. I've also been more honest with people and uh, just being like more myself around people. And that's then, uh, and so that's why I really enjoy now like, hang out with people and <clears throat> on a stream like that, I also like just to make jokes and stuff. And, yeah. That's really cool. Um, but my personality. Yeah. I don't know. I did the test. I was an I, INFP. I am. Is that a, the media? I, I remember that test intermediator. Like what? A mediator. Yeah. It's like the 10 person. Or 16 yeah. person space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what's the mediator. Uh yeah, they're like like writers and stuff, I think. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm not sure how, how um uh how true that is, but well there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh do you do you like to read? books um are you like a, a person who likes to read like maybe even yeah. like self mm -hmm. ah, sorry go ahead 
I, I used like as a kid I read a lot um, but then I kind of stopped reading a lot uh, since since high school I think um, and I'm, I'm trying to pick it up again but it, it somehow feels like I have this thing where, where if I if I do something for too long I'm like I kind of feel guilty I'm like oh I should be doing something productive and I even have that with reading so that's what I'm kind of trying to dismantle now this mental model of like I have to be yeah. productive and I just I should just um open up to more ideas and that's that's what kind of what you do with reading as well so I'm trying to pick it up pick it to pick it up more yeah got it pick because I was asking because you um you know along this conversation like it seems to me that you like consume information like about how to be like more optimal in stuff like with mm -hmm. life or like with your work so i guess that you you also like just like to watch conferences or like maybe listen to podcasts or stuff like that uh, related to like improvement or do you not do that those kind of things uh yeah i don't do that a lot <laughs> I should, it comes up now because those those are the things I remember, you know, about this stuff. But um, uh, I always had, also had this realization that every interview I I read, I'm always like, oh, this person is so good at um, self improvement. <laughs> but now that I'm like being interviewed, I'm like, oh well, I just saw two like GDC conferences. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, oh, guys. Are... So no, I, sh I should do that more, but. No, I just, um, I don't really read a lot about that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Um, but I, I, I guess I do think about, you know, I obviously, obviously I do think about making games a lot and, um, cause just, that's just what I practice. And the, the hardest thing is not really like coding or doing art or something. It's just like projects, doing projects. is really hard, like finishing projects and yeah. Uh, going through like design struggles you'll have or like motivation issues that's that's really the hardest part about making games or anything creative i think um because like, if you see the end result it's like maybe it's a bit complicated but it's like yeah I, i could probably do that as well but making something original is like like really really like difficult um so that's what i i like i That's also what we practice a lot, like just finishing projects, doing the whole, the whole thing, and that's, uh, that's that's one of the hardest things I think about making games. Um, so that that's why I think about that a lot. Yeah. 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 It's, it it's like I'm still like feeling like, like I I'm a person who likes to like read, or like listen to stuff like self improvement stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's like, it seems like it's just like second nature to you because you're saying it as if those things are obvious and they are, but at the same time, I think for most people, they aren't like, like, yeah, like everything that you said about like the process, like there's literally just like books and curses and, uh, stuff related to like, Like yeah, making projects is hard, and you have to stick with them, and you have to learn how when to quit. Uh, sorry, when to quit. You know, like if it's not a good idea, you you have to drop it. Um, you have to uh, create like a a minimum viable product, or like you know, like a. You don't have to be so picky about like oh, but I wanted to add all these features to my game. Like, you're more realistic about like oh, I have to finish this. So like a lot of stuff that you. Uh, are doing basically like yeah it's interesting to me because it seems like it's kind of like second nature to you <laughs> yeah I don't know if you agree with that I think it's more of a case of um like if like if I um there's there's a difference between knowing something and, and understanding it or or knowing it for yourself and I think there's there's this there's this thing that there's no really like substitute for 
substitute for doing something yourself. Uh, and once you like figure, like do stuff yourself and figure stuff out, of course it's, it's helpful to find advice and find people who, uh, who made mistakes before you. And, but I think the most important thing is just like struggle a lot and just do it a lot and just practice. Um, so I don't really think it's a second nature to me, uh, really, but it's just more of a journey to find what works for you. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's like a different, kind of a different journey for, for everyone. And, um, yeah, so I don't think, I don't yeah. really think nature to me it's, it's just like a really long time of, of struggle <laughs> struggling <laughs> yeah yeah that, that makes sense yeah mm. like just going through life like i think it just comes down to like having an idea of what you want to do like let, like whether it's a project or your life like just having an idea or like a direction of like okay well i want to go there you know i want to be there when this thing is done or like when you know this situation is happening and like just finding a way to get there and then just like going through the struggles that, that naturally come by when you go in the direction that you want to go authentically so yeah yeah like it's yeah completely agree with that yeah of course it it, it is helpful to see other people's views and stuff and um and uh, like read interviews and yeah um, for sure really helpful but that but, but like still i think the the best thing to to get better at stuff is, is just try it and and do it and and fail and do, try again <laughs> <laughs> yeah and also like um there's also this 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 post by the way that i refer to a lot by uh derek Yu. okay on finishing games this was like my, my uh, I read this a lot, <laughs> like uh, many times. And it's just, it, it just, um, there's all these things that like, I think everyone recognizes that keep you from <laughs> the game. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a long post, okay. I'm gonna read it for sure. Yeah. This was something that, that really uh, helped me. I think that's even a comment of me like, Saying like, oh my god, thank you for posting this. <laughs> <laughs> I finally finished my first game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it it, yeah. it it really helps to see like uh, what other people are doing and get and get advice from them for sure. It's really helpful. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Well, um, I think uh, I, I could keep talking like just about stuff yeah <laughs> um but like i think it might be somewhat late with you and uh also in here not late in night but like yeah um yeah we could talk for a while yeah, yeah. well um uh, it was definitely a pleasure to yeah. hear, hear you about your life and work your, your perspective yeah, likewise. I hope you um, you you gain something from it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs>